Somebody came to me this week and said that they've had a very close relationship with Allah since childhood. They've made dua to Allah from a very early age, even when they were a teenager. Whenever they asked Allah for something, Allah provided. This person actually had a pretty tough life. Father passed away at an early age, no brothers. And this woman has lived a pretty lonely life and basically decided to really truly depend on Allah. As she grew, she found that Allah miraculously answers her prayers. It's a really beautiful connection she had with Allah. Where did the question come from? The question came from a fact that more recently she went through quite a series of very unexpected difficulties in life. And she decided that she's going to increase her ibadah to Allah and increase her du'as because her problems have also increased. And so she does that and she prays like she's never prayed before, fasts like she's never fasted before, begs Allah, cries to Allah, sheds tears before Allah like she's never done before. But the problems keep getting worse. And she starts thinking to herself, maybe Allah is not happy with me because before I used to pray and everything used to get answered. And in her mind, the reason was, I must have done something wrong. Allah must no longer be answering my prayers because somehow I've been disqualified. This is a very common notion that can creep into somebody's mind. Every human being makes dua and we're expecting that Allah will give us an answer. We're hoping that Allah will solve our problem. There are two kinds of duas. One kind of dua is we want a problem that we have right now to be solved. And of course, we make dua for our future. We make dua for ourselves, our children. Ya Allah, things are good right now. Ya Allah, keep them this way. But the first thing I wanted to highlight is a quick reminder to all of you. Your dua getting answered immediately or not getting answered immediately has nothing to do with whether or not Allah is happy with you. You have the case of Nuh alayhi salam who was a very loving father. He made da'wah, he invited his people to Islam for 950 years. You think he made dua for his son? You think he made dua for his wife? All those years, or he didn't care about them? All those years of dua, and they didn't change. Does he blame himself? Yeah, maybe I didn't do something right. Or maybe Allah stopped listening to me. The reason I'm starting with that is people that were much better than we are. They also had similar problems. Our Messenger والسلام, made lots of dua. You don't think he made dua for his uncles, his family? Despite all of that loving dua, Allah Azza wa will himself tell him, Inna You don't get to guide who you love. I've met so many young people whose parents are in a haram, explicitly haram business. And the children, the son and the daughter is trying to tell the father and the mother, please get out of this. We are dependent on you. You're paying my college tuition. You're providing for us, but you're providing for us from haram income. And I'm not in a position to provide for the family right now, but this is wrong. And then they're told you're being disrespectful. You shouldn't talk back to your parents, etc, etc. Now it's the flip side. It's the children making dua for the guidance of their parents. But things aren't changing. And then on top of that are situations like health calamity, or you can't find a job, you have money problems, and you're making dua to Allah. I even did irtikaf last year, and I kept making dua, and I didn't pick my head up from sajda all night long, and still I have this problem. So the first thing I want to remind myself and all of you is that Prophets, all of them, much before us, Allah mentions their duas consistently in the Quran. And Allah also mentions their problems consistently in the Quran. You don't think, for example, that Yaqub alayhi salam, the father of 12 sons, made dua for all of his sons? And especially for his son Yusuf, when he lost his son Yusuf, you don't think he made dua for Yusuf's safety, that Yusuf should come back home? We know that he cried so much, he lost his eyesight. And all of those duas for so many years go unanswered, and then they eventually they get answered. You don't think that the mother of Musa السلام, when she put her baby in the water and the river just takes the basket away, the basket could flip over any time. And how do you know the basket is waterproof? How do you know it's not going to leak? How do you know it's not going to hit a rock and it's done? It's a baby in a river. You don't think that mother is making dua to Allah? And notice the difference. In the case of Musa's mother, she makes dua to Allah and a few hours later, she's reunited with her son. By the time the baby is hungry for the next meal, he's back with his mother. But the case of Yusuf السلام, he was separated from his father, but he wasn't reunited with his father for many years. All of our problems are not going to be solved because we made a dua to Allah. Understand the reality of dua. What is the purpose of dua? We often confuse dua with talab. Talab in Arabic means to ask for something, to demand something. Dua means literally to call. That's what it means. Da'utukum, I called you, I invited you, I cried out to you. This is dua. When we make dua to Allah, sometimes in that dua we are making demands. It's true. We're making requests. 
But we should never forget that all of those requests, you know what they are at the end of the day? It's a humble slave of Allah turning back to Allah and begging Allah to help him with whatever problem. But it's more than Allah solving your problem. It's just the act that you communicated with Allah that's the most valuable thing. The fact that you actually engaged Allah in conversation, that is the goal in the end. Whether or not Allah will solve your problem immediately is a separate problem. So our du'as are not the same as placing an order. Now I get to Maryam Salamun Alayha. The thing with Maryam Salamun Alayha was even when she was young, her birth was strange. It was mentioned in the Quran. Not many people's birth is mentioned in the Quran. And the mother was expecting a son, but she had a daughter instead. And Allah says, Laysa dhakaruka al untha. This girl is like no other boy. This girl is special. This child is born. She's actually given a special place in what was then the central house of Allah. And Zakaria alayhi salam used to take care of her. And every time he used to come to visit her to make sure she's doing okay. Kullama dakhala alayha Zakaria al mihrab, wajada indaha rizqan. Every time he'd walk in, he'd see fruits food in front of her and he'd say, where did you get these fruits? These fruits don't even grow here. And these fruits aren't even from this season. These fruits grow in the winter, these fruits go in the summer. Where did you get them from? She would respond, Qalat huwa min indillah. These come especially from Allah. Imagine somebody whose du'as are answered in a way that special delivery from the sky of food for this woman. And so when this sister was telling me her du'as get answered in life, I remembered Maryam salamun alayha and how miraculously Allah would intervene and provide for her even matters like food. Very special child. What I wanted to share with you is later on in life what happens to her. When she's a young woman, angels visit her, tell her that she's going to have a child. The first thought in her mind, I'm not married. What do you mean I'm going to have a child? Lam yamsasni bashar. No man has ever touched me. What in the world do you mean I'm going to have a child? Kadaliki qala huwa rabbuki. That is how your master declared it. I'm sorry, we're just here to deliver the news. We're not here to negotiate whether this is going to happen or not. That decision has been made. You're having a baby. Now she's in shock. What am I going to do? She's going to turn back to Allah and hope that this will not happen to her. And I'll fast forward a little bit for you. Just so you appreciate what happened to this woman. After she had the baby and she came back to her town. The entire community that looked up to her as a zahida, as a spiritual woman, as a woman of worship and ibadah, someone who even the prophet of their community, Zakaria, had endorsed. All the masjid community is standing there. She's walking back with a baby and they all start collectively, together start humiliating her. How could you do this? Now I want to take you back to how she dealt with this problem. Because no amount of dua she made is going to change what Allah has decided. And what does she do? As she's about to deliver the child, she says, Ya laytani mittu qabla hadha. She says, if only I could die before this happens. There is no other place in the Quran anybody ever wishes for death. Think about that. Why is it there? Allah Azza wa is acknowledging that sometimes people go through such traumatic, humiliating situations where they wish they were dead. And they'll have to find comfort in the example of Maryam Salamun Alayha. But she didn't stop there. She said, وَكُنْتُ نَسْيَمْ مَنْسِيَّةً Common translations say, I wish I was dead, I wish I was forgotten. But there are two words of being forgotten. One of those words, nasyan, actually means, I hope nobody ever misses me. They don't even ask the question, where did Maryam go? I wish I could be invisible, forgotten from people's memories right now, and nobody even has the thought of me. There are people that go through the kind of depression and anxiety where they don't come out of home. They don't answer text messages. They get anxious being around people. They're going through so much trauma that they wish they were forgotten. As a matter of fact, even if somebody knocks on the door, they say, I wish they didn't remember me. I wish I didn't have to face anybody. They want to just crawl away, 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 just be by themselves. This is nasyan. And then later on, even if years go by and nobody found out what happened to her, mansiyan, she's completely forgotten. There's no memory of her in the future either. I hope nobody thinks of me right now and I become invisible in the future also. I wanted to highlight this woman's trial because this is a woman of dua whose duas used to get answered immediately. She used to didn't even have to ask for food and he used to come. And this is the situation Allah put her in. This is not because Allah forgot about her. This is not because Allah wants to humiliate her. All of this ended up becoming Allah honoring her. What was her humiliation? Her humiliation was people are gonna say you had this child without being married. You had a haram child. And what was the child's name? His name was Isa. There is no other prophet in the Quran who when Allah mentions their name, he honors their parents also. Except 
Isa. Isa ibn Maryam. Isa ibn Maryam. Over and over again. Isa the son of Maryam. Do you find Muhammad the son of Abdullah? Do you find Yaqub the son of Ishaq? Ishaq the son of Ibrahim? No. Multiple times. When Allah honors that messenger, He honors his mother. And by the way, this is important because for the Arabs, when you say Ibn, or even the Semitic people, when you say Ibn, right after Ibn, you mention the father's name. Allah goes out of His way to remind people that no, He has no father and we are going to go out of our way to honor that mother. Isa ibn Maryam. Sometimes your pain is going to be a relief for other people. This is the pain of Maryam Salamun Aliyah. Every time a woman is humiliated, every time a woman is falsely accused, every time a woman wishes she was dead, then to face what she's supposed to face, then she's going to find comfort in Maryam Salamun Aliyah. And every time she finds that comfort, the rank of Maryam rises again and again and again and again. SubhanAllah. Our du'as are a means by which we connect to Allah. Our du'as are not a means by which this world becomes heaven. This world is going to be full of trials. People that were much better than we are had difficulty in life. That's okay. لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدْ We created all human beings in toil and labor and struggle. Struggle is a part of life. The purpose of du'a is to help you and me deal with those struggles and to never forget that Allah is with us whether it's hard times or easy times.